song. Come sing a new song with us. Good morning, new song. Our first reading is from the book of Acts, chapter 9. Meanwhile, Saul, still breathing threats and murder against the disciples of the Lord, went to the high priest and asked him for letters to the synagogue at Damascus, so that if he, thought, if he found any who belonged to the way, men or women, he might bring them bound to Jerusalem. Now, as he was going along and approaching Damascus, suddenly a light from heaven flashed around him. He fell to the ground and heard a voice saying to him, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? He asked, who are you, Lord? The reply came, I am Jesus whom you are persecuting, but get up and enter the city and you will be told what you are to do. Word of God, word of life. Thank you. Our gospel reading is from the book of John chapter 21. After these things, Jesus showed himself again to the disciples by the sea of Tiberias. Jesus said to them, Bring some of the fish that you have just caught. So Simon Peter went aboard and hauled the net ashore full of large fish, 153 of them. And though there were so many, the net was not torn. Jesus said to them, come and have breakfast. Now none of the disciples dared to ask him, who are you? Because they knew it was the Lord. Jesus came and took the bread and gave it to them and did the same with the fish. This was now the third time that Jesus appeared to the disciples after he was raised from the dead. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he had said to him the third time, do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, feed my sheep. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. God. Amen. How are we doing, congregation? Very good. Uh, let's say blessed and highly favored. Everyone say blessed and highly favored. Blessed and highly favored. Amen. All right, we're continuing our sermon series, Resurrecting Community. Last week we talked about healing wounds, and uh, we remembered the story of the community after they had uh, met the risen Jesus. They were the ones that went out to find Thomas and to restore him into the community. Um, even with his doubts, even with his anger, they took him as he is and they brought him in, and it was what they were gathered together that they were able to see again uh, the risen Christ. And uh, that's been a challenge for us uh, during COVID to be able to keep our, our community connected, but it's been such a joy over the last three or four weeks seeing um, new fa familiar faces coming back into the community of Christ just as Thomas came back in again. Today we welcome Dave and Ray Price after over a year that you stepped into this church. So it's so wonderful to see you guys. Um, and it's the job of all of us to kind of stitch together those uh, people that are on the margins uh, and we haven't uh, reached out. Each one of us has a chance to kind of incorporate the body of Christ in that way. Today we move on to, uh, in resurrecting community, I call it assessing assets. How many of you uh, work in HR? Does anybody work in HR or uh, was responsible for hiring people? How many of you have uh, went into a job interview of some sort and you just either blew it or they just uh, did, 
did not see you as you were and they, you got rejected for things that you didn't seem, seem fair? Did anybody kind of miss a, a job interview because of, you were just, they didn't see you in your true self? Before I came to New Song Church, I was interviewing at other uh, congregations and there was a, a nameless, it was kind of like a big, uh, very famous historical church in Brooklyn uh, that I um, had found out about mainly. It wasn't a Lutheran church, it was another denomination. A very close friend of mine, he, um, he was the final candidate at the church and then he decided he wasn't called to the church and he stepped back from it um, and he told me about it and he thought I would be a good fit for the congregation and they required a CV and I, to be honest, I had no idea what a CV was. Uh, it's a curriculum something in Latin. How do you say that word? Vita? Vitae? Whatever. So... Uh, my friend, who I'll also say nameless, he, uh, having never done a curriculum, whatever, uh, he sent me his curriculum vitae in order to uh, use as a model. And so I took his model and I uh, overlaid it with my own information. Now there's some sort of um, process that Microsoft Word has in which it keeps the old document while you uh, fill in the new document. I can't remember what it's called. Um, what's it called? Say it louder. Track changes. track changes. Yes, that's it. It's track changes. I had no idea that there was this thing called track changes. And so I got this curriculum vitae ex uh, done, and I was very excited at the opportunity to uh, apply for this church. And so I submitted my curriculum vitae, uh, and it had the track changes on there. So it had the entire uh, curriculum of the candidate that had rejected them. <laughs> and... So I got an email back saying, uh, we're not going to interview. And by the way, uh, just a word of warning, if you apply for jobs, make sure you uh, eliminate the track changes. <laughs> so they missed out on, I think they had missed out on a good candidate. Imagine if God puts you in charge of hiring the apostles. Imagine instead of uh, having Jesus uh, discern the apostles, if we put Larry in charge of hiring the apostles. And imagine we set up an apostles' uh, employment agency. So I've written a, a nice uh, dramatic narrative. It's, I put a lot of work and effort into this. I'm submitting it for uh, consideration at the Tonys this year. So uh, bear with me as we consider the process of hiring God's apostles, okay? Aplos apostles' employment agency, we are sent to send you into the mission field. We are hiring an apostle, and we have an opening for one position. I'd like to thank all of you for applying for the position of apostle. And as a reminder, apostles are sent by God into the world to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. That's the job, to share the good news. If you are hired, you will be, uh, your job will be to tell the world that Jesus is risen. Now, I'd like to interview uh, some of you uh, right here, and I thank you all for coming for this job interview uh, application. And I'm going to go in the order in which the applications were received. Our first one is um, Magdalene, Mark Magdalene. Mark Magdalene, are you over here? Mark Magdalene? Mark Magdalene, are you over there? Mark Magdalene? <clears throat> I think that's Mary Magdalene. Mary Magdalene, next! <laughs> that one takes a little while. <laughs> okay, our next candidate is Saul. Uh, is there a Saul? Yes, that's me. I got to get this right. Okay. Applicant, job position. Uh, yes, that's me. Well, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm very, very devoted. I've been religious my whole life. Oh, that's really good. We're looking for somebody like that. I've spent my whole life studying the Bible, uh, following the law as best I can. I've been one of the best uh, followers of God the world has ever seen. Oh, well, that's wonderful. That's great. That's one of the vital credentials. Tell us a little bit more. What's your, what's your work experience? Well, I've kind of uh, worked in um, kind of project management, management, maintenance type things. Oh, really? What kind of projects have you worked in? I've kind of been in the judicial system. Oh, really? Uh, for example, well, my last job, I uh, was working to execute one of the early Christians named uh, Stephen. In fact, I was in, in charge of uh, coordinating and taking the coats while the people stoned him to death. <clears throat> you, 
You know this is a job to share the good news and to be a follower of the way. Next! Okay, get rid of... <laughs> All right, we have another applicant here. Um, I'm Peter, I'm ready, let me interview. You don't need those other candidates, get rid of them. I am by far the best apostle you could ever have, and none of these other apostles could even hold a, a pail of water compared to me. I am your best candidate. You can close the process. I'm the one that you want. <clears throat> Do you mind if I even get a chance to ask you a question? This is, I'm in charge of this process. Oh, oh, yes, you seem rather impulsive. <sighs> yes, I've been told that before. I'm a little impulsive, I'm sorry. Please, go away, ask your questions. Okay, well, this job, uh, Apostle, it requires being, it's a very intensive job. Uh, you'll be put in positions of high pressure. You'll um, also be facing people that will give you resistance, that they're not gonna like what you have to say or to do, and these people might be in great power. So I'd like to find out what kind of experience do you have under pressure situations? How do you handle high, intense pressure situations? Hmm. Well, let me think, let me think, let me think. I was actually with Jesus when he was arrested. That was an extremely intense, high pressure situation. Okay, well, tell us more about how you handled that situation. Well, right when they came to, to get him, I was ready to go to battle. In fact, I took my sword out and I was ready to, to go and fight the, guy, the bad guys to keep them away from Jesus. But then Jesus got mad at me and he got angry with me for chopping the guy's ear off. He didn't like that at all. And then after they took him away, my whole world became swirling in my head and I became uh, overcome with fear and anxiety and I ran away to just try to figure out what was going on and, and where I was, what was happening. And then before I knew it, there was a woman that was accusing me of knowing Jesus. And then I thought that I might go in that same fate. And, and I said I didn't know him. Not once, not twice, but three times. Next! <laughs> if Larry had been in charge, maybe... Peter and Paul never would have gotten called to do their work. If we, through our human lens, you know, human, uh, HR, what is the job of an HR company? It is to avoid liability, right? To avoid risk and to eliminate the candidates that don't belong. And if we look through the human lens, Peter and Paul would have been a high, high, high risk candidate. And yet... It turns out that Jesus does give them both job applications, and he does give them job interviews, right? If we look at the, the first case, when uh, Saul is interviewed to become the apostle, he will become known as Paul, better known. Uh, he is on the road to Damascus at his own, uh, paying for it out of his own pocket to persecute more Christians. He's going there to try to grab the Christians and bring them back to Jerusalem where they can face arrest. That's kind of hating on the next level, isn't it? Like, that's not just a passive hating. That's an active uh, persecution. So much hate. And yet God has something radically different in mind for Saul, a completely different road to fall. This Saul will become one of the great evangelists, one of the great apostles, one of the great even theologians of the church. He will uh, help incorporate the world into the gospel of Jesus Christ. And his job interview is just one question. On the road, he is uh, brought down to the ground and he is asked, Saul, why do you persecute me? This is Jesus himself uh, interviewing Saul, interrogating Saul with a question. And with that, his whole worldview, his whole Righteousness that is really uh, verges on fundamentalism comes crumbling down as he discovers what he thought was devotion to God it was actually filled with hate and hurting followers, like hurting and harming people. In this one question, uh, it is a simple question, but it is most difficult for him to answer, and he actually incoherently doesn't even answer the question. He's got nothing to say. And so he, he, he fumbles out, he mumbles, he says, Who are you, Lord? That's his answer. 
Not a great interview question answer, is it? And yet Jesus, seeing him knocked to the ground, says, get up. You got the job. What? I want you. I need you. Go to the house in Damascus and you will be told what to do. They have an entrance package for you. HR is waiting for you at the, in Damascus. And that one question that he fails to answer, why do you persecute me? Why do you hate me? You got the job. Shouldn't he be punished for his transgressions, really? Like if this were a dramatic uh, Western movie and, and, uh, and Saul was on his way to Damascus and, and another group heads him off at the pass, wouldn't you see a great big shootout or you'd see him captured and he himself would be handcuffed and hauled into the authorities? But that's not the way of the Lord. Instead, he has given mercy and grace and shown a new pathway that will, he will be able to uh, share the gospel with the world. Peter, on the other hand, his job is very different, right? Uh, Jesus, at this time, it's during uh, Easter season, and he comes and he appears before disciples at different moments, and this time he's at the Sea of Galilee. The disciples have gone back to fishing, and Jesus comes in the morning and feeds them, fills their boat with fish, and then he... Um, cooks breakfast for them. Imagine, Dave, if Jesus cooked breakfast for you, how amazing that would be to be able to be fed and nourished and your belly is full uh, because Jesus has cooked a dinner for a breakfast for you. And then he gets down to business with Peter. Peter has to go through his own job interview. Do you love me more than these? That's the first question. Do you love me more than these? Scholars aren't exactly sure what he means. What do you mean more than these? Some people uh, argue that he means more, more than th these boats and these fish. Do you love me more than your old job? Others say, do you love me more than these disciples love me? And, you know, when Peter hears, do you love me more, what's he going to answer? I'm the one, right? Uh, I think Peter has a competitive issue, a problem. I've eliminated myself from any competitive issues at all. But Peter himself, he always wanted to be the most, Right? And so, I love you the most, Jesus, yes. And once, twice, three times, the same number that he denied Jesus, uh, he says, do you love me? Do you love me? Do you love me? And each time, Jesus pulls a fast one on him, right? Do you love me more than these disciples love me? I love you the best. So then what does Jesus want you to do? Feed them. If you love me more than, you, than these losers... Your job is now going to be to tend to them and to feed them and to love them and to care for them. Both may have failed our own uh, job interview had we interviewed them, but God saw something in them that was where they needed to be and he was called and they were called and they helped to transform the world. Um, we discover that uh, when David was called to be king, uh, he was the last, the runt of the lot. And we see in this phrase, it says, uh, God does not look upon us as, the way humans do, uh, but God looks upon the heart. Do you hate me? Do you love me? Those are the two questions that they get asked. And at the time, until he was transformed and converted, the answer was, yeah, I do hate you. Peter yearned to show that he loved Jesus, but he was still kind of figuring it out. But in both questions, Jesus says, come work for me. You got the job. Um, imagine we have so many gifts in our church. We have accountants, we have administrators, bankers, financers, teachers, lawyers, nurses. The list can go on and on and on. We have lots of talents. Architects, attaches, <laughs> uh, but the one criteria that Jesus has for us, I say, that, I say that church and to follow the way of the Jesus, Jesus has the highest and the lowest standards in the world. The lowest standards is he welcomes anybody. He was hanging out with people you would never be, want to be seen with. But he also he has the highest standards for us because he wants us as we receive the forgiveness and the love and the grace of Jesus, 
that we ourselves are empowered and equipped to, to be his ambassadors in the world, to love the world as radically as he loves you. I'm thankful. Uh, when I went through my job interview at New Song Church, uh, they had a strong HR uh, committee. <laughs> so uh, they wanted to make sure every single uh, group got to kick the tires a little bit. Right? Do you know how many days my interview process was? Five days long. Uh, P Paul only got one question, and he got the job, but New Song has higher standards than Jesus. So five days long. <laughs> And I came imperfect, broken. Uh, new song at the time was imperfect, broken. But together, we allowed the Holy Spirit to see in one another that God had called us together. When we allow our eyes and our hearts and our minds to see the way Jesus sees us, it's amazing what is possible in this world. May each of us assess the assets of one another and ourselves through the lens of Jesus. Amen.